86 Venezuelan migrants are returning home from Argentina on Wednesday. Almost 3,000 Venezuelans in Latin America have been repatriated under the Return to the Homeland program. Many have criticized the poor living conditions and the exploitation they faced while abroad. Here I have worked since 8.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the evening. You are giving one hour for lunch and you work for 14 hours every day. I only had half Sunday to rest. I worked like this for six, seven months. It is hard because my initial plan was to bring my family, but then it gets hard and at the end you need to choose between being a migrant or your family. So returning is the only way to be with them. Our correspondent in Buenos Aires, Egaro Esteban, has the details. 86 Venezuelan citizens are returning home thanks to the Return to the Homeland plan. The initiative, boosted by President Nicolás Maduro, gives them the chance to return and overcome the difficult situation they have faced here in Argentina. They say they have suffered work exploitation and lack of health care. For that reason, the most affected Venezuelan citizens have been given priority in this first group that is returning. More Venezuelan citizens have signed up and are already registered in a waiting list. So far, around 1,000 people have registered. In this Venezuelan embassy, we have seen emotional moments of joy and hope. They have lived in uncertainty, and now they have the chance to start all over in their country. The Workers' Party in Brazil has a new presidential candidate less than a month to the presidential election. Our correspondent Andre Vieira has the details in this report. The Workers' Party handed over the presidential candidacy to Fernando Haddad. He will replace former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva in the electoral race. Hundreds of people gathered in Curitiba the decision of the judiciary not to allow Lula to run. Haddad will continue Lula's project. He will build a better country for all of us, a country with public policies that takes into account the black community in universities, that brings back the housing project. He will promote policies to take care of us, different from the government of Michel Temer. An act to denounce that Lula suffers a persecution process and that the justice of Brazil has not taken the honest decision to keep Lula da Silva as candidate. Through a letter read by one of the founders of the party, Lula indicated Haddad as his candidate. No suppressor can be bigger than the people. That is why our ideas will reach everybody through the voice of the people, higher and louder than the lies of global. That is, I want to ask all of you that would vote for me, vote for Fernando Haddad for president of the republic. Fernando Haddad has reaffirmed Lula's innocence and called the PT and its militants win October's election. It's time to go out to the streets with our heads held high and win this election. We're going to win this election for Lula, for the Workers' Party, and for the Communist Party of Brazil, for social movements, and for Brazil. Brazil deserves this victory. We're not going to give up. Social movements are now facing a new battle as they have to campaign in less than a month. We are facing a historical moment and people know it. We work and fight for Brazil and connect our people to Latin America. Haddad represents Lula, represents social movements, represents union movement. We are going to support this campaign. There is time to lose. We are going to vote for Haddad. Fernando Haddad is now expected to build a popular project that gives power to the people. As Lula said, now the new presidential candidate will have to represent him and represent all Brazilians. Meanwhile, the Venezuelan Vice President Delcy Rodriguez has met with the governor of the China Development Bank to discuss projects paid for by joint Venezuelan Chinese funds. Economic globalization and global governance are being attacked. Nonetheless, China and Venezuela have maintained mutual trust, with the Venezuelan government supporting China in topics of great importance to us, like control of the Southern Sea. Meanwhile, China has supported Venezuela through a special arrangement when oil prices were low. We recognize that Latin America must look to itself, but it must also foster greater relationships so we may go beyond being seen as the United States backyard. We need relationships based on the respect of international rights. China agrees with this instance with fostering cooperation against hegemony. A group of Colombian senators have visited former FARC combatants who are working to re-enter society. Despite their efforts, the former combat combatants have not received much of what was promised by the government. 
Pablo Catatumbo, member of the Peace Commission, stated that the visit to Mira Vale revealed the lack of actions by the government despite the support received from the UN and countries like Norway. The state can't pass the responsibility to other nations. It is the government's responsibility to apply what they promise. The senator of the FARC party said that the lands agreed upon in the peace treaties must not serve as confinement spaces and asked for an end to the lies about alleged disagreements between FARC high officials. Ivan hasn't quit the party nor the peace process. In fact, his letter was another sign of his compromise. These are just lies being spread by enemies of the peace process. Other senators stated that the former combatants are committed to this project and highlighted the progress that has already been made. This project is working, despite the government's lack of action towards peace. The productive projects developed here are really important for the whole region. Senator Ivan Sepeda said that the state abandonment is just one of the main concerns for former FARC combatants and communities. The state has not fulfilled its promises of social and economic reincorporation, of solving the judicial limbo of former combatants who are very worried about how they will be treated by the special jurisdiction for peace, and also feel insecure in the area after witnessing military operations there. The Peace Commission will present a report to Congress regarding guarantees and security for former combatants. They will ask the government to enforce the peace agreements and to include productive projects for former combatants in the general national budget. A vigil was held in St. Lucia for Botham Shah, who was shot and killed in his Dallas U.S. home. A female police officer allegedly mistook Jean's apartment for her own and thought that he was an intruder. The officer was arrested on a manslaughter charge. I felt that it was robbing St. Lucia, robbing the world of a leader, uh, a God-fearing citizen, a positive soul, a gem. We'll take a short break now. Join us in a few. So yeah, national security is one of the most powerful notions in modern times. To swindle, I think, people to do things that are not in their best interest and to support massive military complexes that are not in anybody's interest, but that are like cancers feeding on society. For Watch a series where the U.S. geopolitical strategies as an empire representing the culture of war and propaganda are shown and how this has served as a tool of social control. Psy War Saturday Only on Telesur Welcome back. Thousands of people from indigenous communities in Guatemala have taken to the streets. Demonstrators are protesting the decision of President Jimmy Morales to expel the International Commission Against Impunity from the country. They are saying this only protects pro-government forces and congressmen from the ruling party. Sixty social movements have joined the protests. Our correspondent Santiago Boutin explains. 30 to 40,000 people from the 48 areas of the Totonicapan region have been peacefully protesting against the government of Jimmy Morales, and especially against impunity and injustice. The peaceful protests are concentrating in at least four strategic points of the Inter-American Highway that connects the Guatemalan capital with the South Mexican border. 
During these latest days of protest, all the different groups have included their demands and joined together in calling for the resignation of Jimmy Morales and to advocate for the continuity of the International Commission against impunity in Guatemala. Chileans have paid tribute to the victims of the dictatorship with a memorial at the National Stadium in Santiago. They remembered the 45th anniversary of the military coup against the late president, Salvador Allende. The National Stadium became the main detention and torture center during the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. The 17-year-long regime left more than 3,200 dead and around 38,000 tortured. As former prisoners, we have an ethical and moral duty to keep the memory alive and keep the record on everything that happened. We have to remember. We have to remember something that hit us very hard in the country and is something too important in our history. We have to remember and that's why I came here. Fishing communities in Ecuador are the latest to be affected by the government's austerity measures. They say they are taking on an unfair share of the burden, while large corporations and multinationals stand to avoid paying penalties. Ecuador's government has announced new diesel prices. The shrimp and fishing sector will see an increase in their diesel costs, in line with the government's austerity measures. Diesel for the tuna and shrimp industry increased only 25 cents on its BAT. For other fishing industries, there will only be a 10 cents increase. Those numbers will remain the same for the next two years. For some analysts, the measure doesn't make sense because not everyone uses diesel. If they had really wanted to save money, they should have revised gas prices. There might be speculation and that is what the fish and trip industries are worried about. That will make them lose competitiveness. Those are exporting sector in Ecuador as a dollarized economy must support them. I don't understand why these subsidies aren't focused on the sectors that bring dollars to the country. The government said they have spoken with the fishing sectors. However, local fishing sectors say this measure just benefits big industries and doesn't respect their work. We haven't been part of any agreement to exchange an increase in gas prices for an extension of artisanal waters of over 800 nautical miles for industrial ships to sail without problem. I make this call because they are only bringing poverty to the fishing communities and artisanal fishing. They are allowing abuse against maritime resources. In light of the recent economic measures implemented by President Lenin Moreno, several social and political sectors are calling for a demonstration on September 13. Denise Herrera, Telesur, Quito, Ecuador. The most vulnerable in Argentina have invented a new way of protesting. They have set up soup kitchens on the streets. Soup kitchens have been installed in Argentina's street to showcase in what condition the most vulnerable sectors are living in and also to demand respect for workers' union rights. We need to discuss about resource distribution for the people most affected by the economic adjustment plan. We need to improve employment rates, tariffs and food policies. Do everything to urgently solve the problems of people, especially children. Macri's zero poverty plan never materialized. Rather, there has been an increase in poverty, unemployment and rise in prices of basic products. We must continue to fight because this government still doesn't care about us. It just makes false promises saying we are on the right path. If they have to live just for a week in these neighborhoods, they'll notice that we are not fine. People are starving in our country. Leaving people in hunger is a crime. These are the consequences of this criminal government's economic model. According to the Social Distress Observatory of the Catholic University of Argentina, the debt has not only increased poverty and affected people psychologically, but it has also affected human development and social integration. This will at least feed some people, but the truth is that every day we can only provide lunch but not dinner. I have to take care of five children. 
How am I supposed to do that? My salary is not enough. I earn 4,000 pesos and a bit of extra money from here and there. But that's not enough for my whole family. People have chosen to protest like this in the streets so that the government can see it and think about those living in difficult conditions. They will keep fighting for their social rights and better economic condition to overcome the growing poverty. It has been 20 years since five Cuban citizens were arrested by the United States for spying. The group known as the Miami Five was convicted with a life sentence. But human rights organizations campaigned for the case to be appealed. By 2014, all of them were freed after a prisoner exchange agreement was reached between Cuba and the United States. Street vendors in Cuba are bringing back the century-old tradition of the pregón. The pregón is the art of singing humorous and rhyming ditties about their products. This tradition has made a comeback with sounds such as reggaeton and electronic music. Cuba's pregoneros are positive their ditties are helping them to stand out. Trinidad and Tobago could fi be finally adopting the Caribbean Court of Justice as its final court of appeal. Even though the CCJ's headquarters is based in Trinidad, the country has long avoided even debating its adoption. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says that cha that will change next year. Transporters in the Haitian province of Santiago have announced protests on Wednesday. They are angry about the rise of fuel prices. Tra carriers also want the authorities to change the hydrocarbon law. And Haitian President Jovenel Moyes congratulated tennis player Naomi Osaka for winning the U.S. Grand Slam. Via Twitter, Moyes said Osaka's win is a tennis triumph for Haiti. Congratulations and thank you to our Naomi who made us so proud. Osaka's father's Haitian, the young athlete, has always embraced her Haitian heritage. One year after several earthquakes shook Mexico, reconstruction is still on the way. Non-governmental organizations say corruption was part of the reasons for the damage. It also withholds public funds from people in need. Our correspondent, Eduardo Martinez, has more. On September 19, 2017, the home of Cristina Leva collapsed. A 7.1 magnitude earthquake destroyed everything their family had. One year later, they are living in an improvised home they built with wood. We don't have the same comfort. With the rain, everything gets wet, everything. We have to sleep in a very small place. East of the city, they learned that the land where their houses were built are at high risk. They still don't know whether there's a plan to relocate them or to improve their buildings. The help they have received is limited. Our house fell in the earthquake. I used to rent my house. With that, I could pay everything and support my daughter, but now she is the only one who works. A report published by the Mexicans Against Corruption and Impunity Organization has gathered the stories of those who lost their lifelong belongings. We learned about several irregularities regarding on how our house was built. After a year of the earthquake, we still continue to struggle. The report also found a corruption network between authorities and construction companies. The earthquake left behind 369 people dead in the central and southern parts of the country. With the documents linked to each property, it has become evident that the government ignored neighbors' complaints regarding the use of land, buildings without permits, or buildings that were damaged in the 1985 earthquake. The investigation has also denounced that $140 million have been assigned to rebuilding the affected areas and that the victims are missing. We'll take a short break now. Don't go away.
Welcome back. The European Parliament has voted for the first time ever to issue sanctions against Hungary for breaching democratic values. The vote was approved with more than two-thirds majority. The decision came after the EU Commission received a report citing allegations including restriction of freedom of expression, press and religion. Victor Orban's government has violated rights, rights of refugees, ethnic minorities and students. We spoke to the Hungarian lawyer Daniel Sarbo about what will likely happen to Hungary now. It's clearly more political uh, than legal, um, but it's, it was a historic vote, uh, as I mentioned, uh, never before voted uh, the European Parliament that a member state violated the core European values and um, in the political level it, it might result um, in lesser EU funds for Hungary for example or, or less fewer positions for Hungarians in European institutions so it, it would uh, make Hungary uh, an outlier in the European institutions. Over 3,000 minors were sexually abused by members of the Catholic Church over a 70-year period in Germany. Local media reported the news after a study commissioned by the German Bishops' Conference was published. Pope Francis has called for a meeting with senior clergymen from around the world in February. And a former employee at a detention center in the United States has been convicted of sexually abusing migrant minors. Livia... Levian Pancheco was found guilty of seven counts of abuse. The boys were awaiting the results of their immigration cases. Pancheco will be sentenced on the 3rd of December. And Morocco has approved a new law banning forced marriages. The bill was approved due to the growing number of cases of gender abuse. The new law criminalizes sexual violence and harassment as well. However, critics say the law needs to properly define domestic violence and ban marital rape. Pro-whaling countries have derailed plans for a South Atlantic whale sanctuary. The plenary meeting of the International Whaling Commission failed to achieve the three-quarters majority to approve the project. The proposal was put forward by Argentina, Brazil, Gabon, South Africa and Uruguay. Environmentalists are urging the Commission to take immediate action to protect whales. We want to continue in this battle because we understand that we are on the right track. Every year, scientific checks deliver mainly from results and surveys on the effects of climate change in the oceans show that it is necessary to create a stronger protection conditions. An Arab League meeting in Egypt's capital has discussed the U.S. decision to cut the funding to the U.N. Agency for Palestinian Refugees. The Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghit said the United States is trying to undermine the legitimacy of the agency. He added that the decision will not change the determination with which the, UNC, the UNRWA serves Palestinian refugees. Last month, the U.S. State Department announced it would be withdrawing all funding to the agency. And a rare Egypt Egyptology manuscript has been restored and decoded. Experts say the 17th century document proves the contribution that ancient Egypt made to the Italian Renaissance. The Thesaurus Hieroglyphicorum was rolled up in centuries of dust, insects, and humidity. It was the Italian archaeological mission in Luxor who revealed its secrets. <laughs> And we've come to the end of this news brief for these and many other stories. You can find them on our website at tellusyourtv.net forward slash English. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Tell Us Your English, I'm Sunny Gray. Thank you for watching. Enjoy our programming from Monday to Friday where you'll find the best